In this example, we're going to look at a DC circuit, specifically a charging RC circuit. So I give you a circuit, has a battery with voltage V, resistor, resistance R, and a capacitor with capacitance C. And I ask you to determine the charge on the capacitor as a function of time. Now everything is initially uncharged and the switch closes upward at time t is equal to zero seconds. So we can solve this problem using Kirchhoff's loop rule. We start off by tracing out a loop clockwise around the circuit and adding up all the voltages. So we get plus V from the battery, minus IR from the resistor, minus Q over C from the capacitor. We know that current I is just dQ dt, and so we can write it as R dQ dt instead of I times R. Now remember, little q is the charge on the capacitor at any given point of time. What I can do now is I can multiply the first expression V by C over C, just one, and I can divide everything by R. The reason I can do that is C times V is just the maximum voltage across the capacitor at the end of its charge times the capacitance itself, which will give me Q naught, the maximum charge on the capacitor. Remember, capital Q naught is a constant. Little q is the charge on the capacitor at any given point in time. So now I can rearrange. dQ dt is minus Q over RC minus Q naught over RC. I can factor out the RC. I can rearrange the terms. I can put dQ divided by Q minus Q naught equal to minus dT over RC. And I can integrate. My limits of integration on the left are zero to Q. I'm starting at zero charge and I'm ending at a final charge of little Q at some point in time. And on the right, I have zero to T, starting at time zero, ending at some time T. And so I can do the integral. Uh, one divided by Q minus Q naught gives an integral of natural log of Q minus Q naught. And when I plug in zero and Q, I get uh, the limits as you see over here. Uh, integral of dt is just t. When I plug in zero to t, I get what you see on the right. I can make use of the properties of natural logs to combine the two uh, natural log expressions on the left. I can take an exponent of each side. e to the natural log, remember, just simplifies down to whatever the argument is and the right becomes e to the minus t over rc. I can divide through by q naught and get 1 minus q divided by q naught. I can rearrange the expression so I get q over q naught is equal to 1 minus e to the negative t over rc. And finally, I can multiply each side by q naught uh, in order to get q as a function of time equals q naught times one minus e to the negative t over rc. You'll notice uh, most of this video was just doing the math. Uh, the physics, the actual Kirchhoff's laws occurred on the very, very uh, first slide of the analysis itself, right? And so what I've done is I've plotted uh, the charge on the capacitor versus time for uh, various time constants. You'll see in blue, tau is equal to one, all the way up through purple, tau is equal to five. As the time constant increases, you'll notice it takes longer and lo longer to charge the circuit. And so you'll see that the ratio Q over Q naught grows more slowly. So a few final thoughts. First off, Kirchhoff circuit laws are not just for batteries and resistors. You can use them for any circuit elements. And second, what would happen if I reverse the polarity of the battery? Um, in other words, what would happen if I take that battery and I flip it over in the circuit?